Good morning all. In a recent poll on YouTube, I asked you the question, which of Madeira or Malta should I visit next? And most of you voted for Madeira. So I listened to you and I came to Funchal, the capital, and this is where I'm staying. You can see two single beds. I'm using the one single bed to lay out some stuff, including my laptop and the map of Madeira, which we will talk about in a second. And this is the bed that I'm sleeping on, reasonably firm and comfortable. And I've also got a little table there, as well as a wardrobe over here in case I need it. And on this side, oh there's a mirror, how's it guys? This is the bathroom. So you can see there the wash basin. There's the toilet. And there's the shower. So reasonably basic accommodation that I'm staying at. But honestly, what more in life would I need when I've got a view like this? Absolutely incredible. Funchal, the capital of Madeira. And you can just about make out the Atlantic Ocean over there. You can see a lot of the typical Portuguese architecture as well. The white houses with the orange brownish rooftops. And over there, very conspicuous looking castle. But just look at the landscape as well. The beautiful hills and mountains here. A very mountainous island here. So fairly basic accommodation, but I was looking for a cheap place to stay. And this was the most affordable option I could find. And I paid 160 pounds for four nights. So approximately 40 pounds a night. But what happened was when I booked it online, it was listed as 165 pounds. I got a five pound discount from booking.com as a genius member. But ultimately I also paid a five pound booking fee using an international car to pay for the room. So yes, in effect, I paid 165 pounds, but still a huge bargain, especially considering this absolutely magnificent view. And I can't wait to explore more of a city with you. So Madeira actually means wood and Funchal means fennel plantation. And as you look outside, you can absolutely see why there's a lot of wood here in Madeira, lots of trees. Madeira is officially called the autonomous region of Madeira as it is one of two autonomous regions of Portugal, the other one being the Azores. But here's the thing though, on the poll on YouTube, I asked you which island between Madeira and Malta I should visit. And I made a mistake in the poll by assuming that Madeira is an island. So I've obviously done further research and Madeira is actually an archipelago of which Madeira Island is part of. But Madeira also consists of Porto Santo and Desertas. And it is administered together with a separate archipelago of the Savage Islands. Sounds like the police is looking for someone out in the wide, wide world of Madeira. But let's look at the map of Madeira a little bit closer. So I mentioned I'm in Funchal. So that's where Funchal is located. And I just want to apologize in advance to all my Portuguese viewers because I am going to mispronounce so many different place names and surnames. But I just want to give you some more information about the island here. So you've got Ponta de São Jorge in the north and Ponta da Cruz in the south. And the distance between those two points is about 22 kilometers. And in the west, you've got Ponta do Pargo and you've got Ponta de São Lorenzo or Lorenzo in the east. And the distance between those two points is about 55 or 57 kilometers. The area of the island is about 741 square kilometers and there are about 250,000 people who live on the island. About 105,000 people live in the capital Funchal and there is the airport I flew into from London it took me about three hours to fly here although the pilots did say we had the advantage of some favorable tailwinds 
and it took me 30 minutes from the airport to Funchal with a local bus and over there you can see the ferry to Porto Santo you can take as well which is part of the archipelago of Madeira and the coastline itself I been told it's about 150 kilometers. It's about midday, so should be uh, reasonably busy. It's a Thursday afternoon though, so most of the weekend things to do like markets, etc. I think might be best to do on another day and in another vlog, but we'll certainly go out and form some first impressions of this beautiful city. Right, let's go and explore guys. Just uh, leaving the hotel room. Here we go, you can see number 44 is where I'm staying. And I'll just lock it up. There we go. All good. Right, here we go. Check out this beautiful day here in Madeira. Right, the hustle and bustle of Madeira. And this is the street in which my accommodation is. So Calzada de Cabuquera. I uh, need to brush up my Portuguese a little bit but you can see what a beautiful day it is here as well in Funchal and the island has several different microclimates so the temperatures would vary from place to place depending on where you are in the island but here in Funchal today and bear in mind this is the end of November but it's a beautiful 21 degrees going up to 23 so no need for any jackets or coats and yeah loads of buses around because actually one of the main bus centers of the city is close to my accommodation but uh, I guess the first impression is there's a lot of traffic and I actually wonder if traffic is a big problem on the island like it was say in Jersey in one of the Channel Islands so which by the way is a sister island of Madeira and if you watched the Jersey vlog you might have remembered the mural with a Portuguese flag and I talked a bit there about the contribution of Madeirans to the island there so a lot of people from Madeira went to Jersey to work and yeah certainly very very interesting flora very very green on the island very hilly very mountainous and certainly also getting ready for Christmas with some Christmas decorations yeah there's a fire station, presumably. Bombeiros Spadores do Funchal. The bus station called SAM. So, S-A-M, which you can see written at the back there as well. And over here, so, this was the bus station I disembarked when I came from the airport. So, this is quite handy that it's over here, not too far from my accommodation, which, makes 40 pounds a night even more attractive very very happy with my accommodation yeah so in this direction is the Porto Marina the marina area and the downtown area as well in this direction yeah so this is classic Portuguese architecture isn't it the white walls with the green balconies and the orange brownish color rooftops but then over here, you also have some modern architecture here in Funchal. Looks like flats and big shopping mall perhaps and a pharmacy. Right, let's cross here with a green man. You can see there's a timer as well. And there it goes to red. But uh, yeah, so pretty organized here in Funchal in Madeira. And they got the yellow taxis as well like New York well like Tunis as well in Tunisia 
and pretty important finance building here as well and at the back there you can't quite see it but there's a reference to Christopher Columbus who I'll mention a little bit later as well as part of a history but he he lived here in Madeira for a bit so yeah La Vie Funchal shopping center definitely a place to come and check out a bit later but for now let's just walk towards the marina front the harbor front there another first impression of a nice spacious pedestrian walkways or the sidewalks as the americans would say but yeah beautiful pedestrian walkways and sidewalks with interesting art or engravings and a beautiful roundabout over there the fountain display and there's the sightseeing bus that might come in handy as well yeah, this tree is also decorated in some lights maybe for the Christmas period and yeah check out the street lights so when I was in Brazil in Sao Paulo in 2013 so long before I started my channel I do remember these street lights from my time in Sao Paulo so there's maybe even a Brazilian connection to the street lights but yeah very very green thank you obrigado you too man thank you yeah another first impression a huge amount of motorcycles in the city many people on motorcycles but it does look like this is a preferred mode of transport in the city or maybe on the island to explore about 150 kilometers of coastline with a motorcycle and yeah trying to find some parking might be an issue and yeah here's the yellow taxis of Funchal again so motorcycles and yellow taxis and I have to quickly stop here just to show you the beautiful flowers here next to the street as well and it, in fact it is part of the municipal gardens and there you can read a bit more about the history but just at the bottom there municipal gardens are laid out with various pathways in stonework characteristic of Madeiran pavements so this is the Madeira on pavement I noticed earlier and you can see uh, maybe this is quite distinct it's certainly very wide and spacious but it's got a particular sort of look to it as well with the beige and black stones absolutely beautiful and opposite here it looks to be a shopping center as well and lots of restaurants and beautiful trees as well and they've got the Ritz look at that the Ritz Madeira so this is where the Lardy Darby Island hangs out or all the tourists and check out these beautiful murals here with the tiles this is very very portuguese and presumably these are scenes from madeira's past as well people hard at work although this one disturbingly has the eyes removed or damaged here so oh, that's uh, that's a shame and the fishermen hard at work and just a beautiful building in general some more luxury shops Rolex David Rosas yeah just a lovely area to walk around on a Thursday afternoon more trees lining the walkways here next to the gardens Are you ready for a history lesson? Well, you've come to the right place. 
because this is a statue of Joao Gonçalves Zarco and apologies if I've butchered that pronunciation we'll just go with Captain Zarco but together with Tristal Vaz Teixeira and Bartholomew Perestrello these three men sailed under the service of Prince Henry the Navigator and claimed Madeira for the Portuguese crown in 1419 and in fact the year before in 1418 Zarco and Vaz were involved in a ship that was driven off course by bad weather and they landed on Porto Santo or the Holy Harbour so that was the year before in 1418 Captain Zarco immortalized here forever in Madeira and actually if you take the view like many economic historians do that 1450 was essentially the year the Portuguese Empire started with the conquest of Quater again with Prince Henry the Navigator at the helm Madeira actually is a very very early part of the Portuguese Empire so 1419 obviously four years after 1415 and Madeira also subsequently became an area that was very very important for the Portuguese sailor to learn more about the trade winds and the North Atlantic Gyre and I mentioned the name of Bartholomew Perestrello so he was actually the father-in-law of Christopher Columbus so Columbus married his daughter Philippa in 1479 and that was before he set sail for the New World and he used Madeira as a base to learn more about the trade winds in the area and the North Atlantic Gyre so Madeira obviously then was a key part of Christopher Columbus's education and eventual discovery of a new world and let's walk a little bit more here in the center and you can hear some beautiful street music and lots of benches where people are relaxing you can see there the classic Portuguese style balconies as well and they're all decorated in lights hello guys you enjoying Madeira? yeah me too and a beautiful cathedral here wow I think it's called Say Say Cathedral again like in uh, like in Sao Paulo when I was there, it was also a Sei Cathedral or Se. Here you go, my house is a house of prayer. Interesting fountain display here. Lots of the steps going down and uh, still some beautiful music being played in the street. Oh, hang on. Oh, sold out. Oh. I thought that was a shame until I realized I can't understand Portuguese. Got the assembly building here, legislative assembly here in Madeira. Yeah, so we've now moved from the city center down here to the harbor front, and there's the Madeira sign, which we'll visit in a second. But again, lots of pizzerias and ice cream shops here. And look, they got the same red style pillar post boxes as you find in the UK. Although obviously with Portuguese writing. And here is the Madeira sign, the Instagram hotspot. Thank you very much. Okay. Notwithstanding my own pronunciation issues, but you would have heard me pronounce it as Madeira, which is what we would say in South Africa. But I'm aware that there are several different pronunciations as well. So the Brits or people in England like to talk of Madeira. And then I know the Portuguese Portuguese pronounce it in a certain way and the Brazilian Portuguese pronounce it in another way. Some pronounce the I as silent, Madeira. But if you've got a particular way you like to pronounce your Madeira, let me know in the comments. A very modern sign in a island or an archipelago with quite a rich history and another structure here don't know what this is could this have been a water tower or even a lookout point and you have several different street stands as well selling nuts and ice cream and various other things and 
look at these chairs here ice cream cone chairs next to this ice cream stand yeah buddy high five for ice cream and locals and tourists all enjoying the spot here in the harbour in the marina area and I've noticed several monuments and statues here in Funchal as well especially here next to this street here yeah. yeah my Portuguese is pretty pretty poor but I think I can make out something to do with immigration and latitude so perhaps Madeirans who have immigrated to other parts of the world Madeirans that I met in South Africa always seem to adapt well to whatever challenge they had and in fact if you look at the history of Madeira the people have always had to adapt to new challenges new environments new technologies in the 1420s the first people started to settle in Madeira these were mostly farmers who couldn't afford land in Portugal where the nobility or the aristocracy owned a lot of the land and so they moved to Madeira in search of a better life and the first farmers predominantly farmed with grain but there was a big challenge that they had and that was one of water here in the southeast of Madeira it's very dry but in the northwest it's quite wet and there's a lot of rain and what happened was a lot of the forest the dense forest in the northwest had to make way for water channels or lavadas that carried water down from the northwest here to the southeast so again they had to adapt to their new environment and also as the 15th century progressed the profitability of grain farming dropped so Prince Henry the navigator had to introduce new commercial crops to the area to make it more profitable so they started focusing on sugar and the sugar production in Madeira was also eventually very profitable in fact I think I've read that the first ever water driven sugar mill was stationed here in Madeira so please let me know in the comments if that is true but also over time the sugar markets of the Portuguese Empire all got moved out towards places like Brazil and Madeira had to find something else to focus on and they did so all the sugar plantations and sugar mills made way for vineyards and they started focusing on producing wine many of you I'm sure have heard of Madeira wine and the wine was very very popular back in the day certainly and the Declaration of Independence was also toasted apparently with a glass of Madeira wine so Thomas Jefferson was a huge fan of the Madeira wine and obviously then suggested that it should form part of the signing of the American Declaration of Independence here are some things for sale some African art and of course we are closer to Africa than to Europe so we're about 520 kilometers from Morocco and I think about a thousand kilometers from mainland Europe so that is another interesting fact although obviously Madeira is an autonomous region of Portugal it's part of the European Union and part of Schengen as well it's actually starting to get a bit overcast here in Funchal as you can see there with the clouds on top of the mountains there but what a beautiful vantage point here from the harbour yeah just another shot there of the cellars and it does look like they're setting up for some big parties over Christmas over here and in fact here's another thing that I've read about Funchal in particular is that they do love fireworks displays and in fact I think the biggest fireworks display ever was held here in Madeira so a Guinness World Record lots of motorcycles again and gosh I think I've stumbled across the palace here Wow, 
This is a lot more imposing than I thought. If you look at it in a tourist brochure, it does not give you a true reflection of its size at all. And there are more traffic issues. But yeah, but you can see the cannons as well over here, so obviously you may not be surprised to hear that Madeira also had issues with piracy in the past, so the island had to be protected, so various forts and maybe even that castle that you saw close to my accommodation were obviously instrumental in protecting the island, so but anyway, let's find a place to cross and yeah, lots of parks and green spaces as well here on the seafront hugging the Atlantic Ocean and in fact talking about the Atlantic Ocean I think Madeira's nickname is the Pearl of the Atlantic and I mentioned to you earlier that Madeira means wood and certainly still still a lot of trees still a lot of wood in the capital even obviously a lot of it would have made way for architecture etc and yeah i think here's a a war monument yeah it would have been the great war first world war 1914 to 1918 people who perished in combat and i guess well i'll just give you another indication of developments here marina de funchal so Lots of construction, lots of cranes here. So, looks like it's getting even bigger and getting ready for more tourism. I wonder what the locals feel about that. Certainly the traffic. I've mentioned a few times now, but it does seem to be a bit of a problem. Crossing here as well. Again, lots of sports bars and nightclubs and yeah here's the palace yeah i mentioned earlier it's a lot more conspicuous a lot bigger than i thought it was going to be and maybe part of the reason is how close we are to it so often when you see castles or forts or palaces you are not as close as i am to it now so yeah definitely the scale is very very impressive so yeah, what do you think of Funchal, the capital of Madeira? Let me know in the comments. And also, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, that would be great. Because I am just one person making videos. I don't have a marketing budget or a production team. I really need your help to help me to grow this channel. And your support in that regard would be much appreciated. But yeah, certainly my first impressions are very, very positive. Very interesting pavements or walkways, quite distinct. Yeah, lots of traffic on the island, a lot of motorcycles, so perhaps something I didn't expect. And I guess the other thing that I did expect was beautiful views, certainly against the hills or the mountains. Anyways, we are back here on Avenida Zarco. So there's the statue of Captain Zarco we saw earlier. And here's more of the palace. And some more symbols there. And I think that's the same cross as you'll see on the flag of Madeira, the Knights Templar. Or, alternatively put, the cross of the Order of Christ. And I think maybe also the coat of arms of Funchal or Madeira. I'm not sure. Please let me know in the comments. Here we go. History in Portuguese, but this is what we want. The one in English. Palace and Fort of San Lorenzo. I think it's how you pronounce it. Only between 1529 and 1540 that Funchal was endowed with its first fortress. And so, yes, yeah, so this is from the... 16th century let's uh, see if we can go in okay so here's the interior here of the 
Palace. And yeah, it looks like it's still very much in use and very well preserved. And check this out, exiting a Portuguese palace and stumbling across a Japanese food restaurant. So a multicultural cosmopolitan edge here in Funchal. Right, let's go back down to the water of a marina there. There's a lot more interesting things to see and to talk about. Let's cross here and immediately greeted by a bit of serenity next to the madness of the traffic. A beautiful fountain here. And yeah, this is a first impressions tour, so obviously I am new to the destination. I'm walking in a bit of a zigzag or in a, an ad hoc pattern. So I'll get better as time goes on with my logistics. But I did notice a big flag here and I think it's a good time to go and check it out. Yeah, so this must be an artificial area because the water is over there and also over there. So this is built on top of the water, seemingly. There's the Madeira sign we saw earlier. And some big Christmas related structure here. And there's the beautiful flag of Madeira waving proudly. The autonomous region of Madeira was established in 1976 and this flag was adopted in 1978. You'll see it's got the blue, it's got the yellow and it's got the cross of the Knights Templar, the red and white cross in the middle there on the yellow band which was the same cross that Prince Henry the Navigator had on his ships. So he was part of a Knights Templar and I mentioned the blue on each side there so the blue represents the ocean so obviously Madeira is surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean but it also represents serenity and nobility. The yellow represents the climate as well as the abundance of life on the island. I've also read that Madeirans are very proud of their flag and it's a real unifying force. Yeah, not just for Madeira Island but also Porto Santo and the Desertas. Been walking a little bit randomly so isn't there that statistical thing called the random drunk walk? Right, bit of deja vu. I'm sure we've walked past here before. The things I do for you, just the patterns, the ad hoc pattern I need to walk to show you the beautiful places I go to. But absolutely my pleasure to do so guys. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with me. And yes. A wine festival of some sort as well here in Funchal. Let's try that again without the motorcycle noise. So, looks to be a wine festival of some sort here in Funchal. And I wonder if that is the Madeira wine they're drinking there. So, by the way, you might have also heard of the Madeira cake. And I've read that it's actually nothing to do with Madeira Island. It's actually got to do with the wine. Because the cake was often served with the Madeira wine. There you go, some local nuts, and gosh, even this McDonald's ice cream looks pretty nice. Yeah, even a McDonald's ice cream looks very appetizing after a long day of walking. And yeah, I mentioned the clouds earlier, but it looks like actually it's making way. And there's a little bit of a breeze, but not too much. And more Christmas decoration, a Christmas star there. And yeah, just look at the beautiful garden that they've built here on top of this hill. And obviously they built a path as well, or a road through there. Very, very innovative. And another sign of Madeirans adapting to their environment and saying yes to new challenges. And yeah, they've even built a restaurant inside that part of a hill. Pretty impressive. And yes, I cannot understand Portuguese. I can make out a few words, but this looks to be something to do with the 50 years between 1973 and 2023. It's like the news of each year. 
and they've put it out here on the walkway. You can see 1973, 1975, 1977, so every two years, but that's because at the back here, you'll have the other year, so 1974, 1975. I think this is a pretty good initiative, reminding people of the past and what happened. 1983, there we go, Angola, obviously also a former Portuguese colony, part of the Portuguese Empire. And as we walk past this time machine of newspapers, which by the way become more colourful, you also have a CR7 museum. And for those of you who don't know who CR7 is, it's Cristiano Ronaldo. And the 7 was the number on his shirt. So the famous football player was born here in Funchal. And in fact, the airport here in Madeira is also called the Cristiano Ronaldo International Airport. Check which was major news in 2015 here in Madeira. He's David Cameron. And who could forget 2021 and all the COVID stuff that we had to go through. It's amazing to think it's only a few years ago and uh, all the freedoms that were curbed and we have them back again. So guys, what I'm saying is if you love traveling, get out and travel because COVID is no longer a thing here. Come to Madeira, go and visit other parts of the world, but use your freedoms that you don't know if you'll ever have them again. And here it is, the CR7 Museum. And of course, a statue of Mr. Ronaldo himself. Named after Ronald Reagan, by the way, because Ronald Reagan was his father's favorite actor. So, Cristiano Ronaldo. And there you go. Inscription there. Born, yeah, 5th of February, 1985. And his name there is the best player in the world. Five euros to enter the museum, which I think is quite a bargain. Here we go. Some of the CR7 merchandise. Golden boot. CR7. You can purchase that for 60 euros. And some perfumes as well, yeah, 50. All right, let's go downstairs. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, there we go. No prizes for guessing who the main protagonist is in this museum. Anyway, there's another clue. So is that the Ballon d'Or, I presume, which he won? So obviously an entire museum dedicated to Ronaldo. And it's just testament to how much the Madeirans admire and respect him and adore him. And there he is. All various trophies and other things on display here and some footage of his goals as well over the years so based on what you see here would you say he's the most loved Madeiran of all time he probably is to be honest and maybe there's a case to be made for captain Zarco or the historians might say Zarco but I think most people would definitely go with Ronaldo. The Premier League title he won in 2006-2007 with United, Manchester United that is. And here you've got the FA Community Shield 2007-2008. Premier League 2008-2009. World Player of the Year 2007-2008. Some Club World Cup trophies as well. Silver ball and golden balls. Best player of the year. Marca fans favorite player. Of course, really a fan favorite. Maybe this is the most special of all the trophies. Check this out. His first ever trophy, eight years old. Here in Madeira. And another statue here which we may not touch. Not that I necessarily have a need to, although some football fanatics might. Some more merchandise and medals over there. Real Madrid, signed shirt, a signed Portugal shirt. Eusebio, another famous Portuguese football player. He was born in Mozambique though, so an African connection there. And check this out. How special is this as a South African meeting Madiba over there? So 
Eusebio and Madiba, two great Africans represented here. And presumably something that was done on his 25th birthday. Letters from children, fans of the world. More letters and paintings from children and other fans. <laughs> CR7 vinyl. Hey Ronaldo, we are two girls called Laura and Sophia. We come from Germany near Munich and we are your biggest fans. And you are the best player of the whole world. People from all over the world that draw inspiration from him. And, you know, all the happiness that he brings people. Not just here in Madeira, but all over the world. Okay, that one of the Ballon d'Ors, Ballon d'Or. Ones that he won, 2014. Yeah, Portugal won the Euros in 2016. And there's the trophy. Portugal won France 0. What do you think of a CR7 Cristiano Ronaldo Museum? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for your visit. Well, thank you, CR7 Museum. And thanks for all the memories, Mr. Ronaldo. All right, guys. It is going to be a bit of a walk back into town, but I really want to show you a little bit of a city center and maybe grab something to eat or drink. I almost feel like taking a break like those tourists over there. But hey, this vlog is not going to make itself. The things I do for you on this channel. Eh? Actually, this walk back to the city center is absolutely brilliant. There's a spar which we also have in South Africa. So it looks like they're prominent here as well. And then Nico's hamburger, which is not something we find in South Africa. And check out this little tiny tour bus that you can take. I think this is the smallest bus I've ever seen. Visit Funchal by bus. One day pass five euro. That's actually pretty good. I might come and check it out. It just occurred to me that won't be the bus, that's just the ticket office, so... <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's my hopes crushed for traveling in an uber small bus. Whenever I'm in a new city or a new location, I always try and orientate myself. And I look for specific reference points or navigational tools to help me negotiate the city or the place I'm in. And here in Funchal, who better than Captain Zarko to help us with our logistics challenges. The navigational expertise of Captain Zarko to help us out. So thank you Captain Zarko, you're saying I should go up here just to check out the magic there. So, well you heard the guy so let's go and explore. Let's go up here past the Banco de Portugal and another beautiful tree-lined street. Yeah, this is really, really cool seeing all these trees next to these imposing buildings almost. And all the trees, like I said, seem to have lights as decorations. More clove shops and coffee shops, massage places. Oh, check this out. Very, very useful. Botica Inglesa, an English chemist, in case I need one. And yeah, obviously a lot of restaurants and people like to dine outside. And there's another street with some Christmas lights, Christmas decorations, so a bit spoiled for choice. Where to go next? I suspect maybe this street here could be an interesting one. Onwards and upwards, passing the massage place. <laughs> Casa Verda. Originally, I thought there wasn't going to be a lot of English explanations or information in the city, and they've absolutely proved me wrong. So, you've got the Portuguese there and then the English here. So, this is the oldest professional photography studio in Portugal, dating from 1865. Wow, very, very interesting. And there, just a sneak preview of a reception area. Yeah, 
more clothes shops and travel agents here and looks like an art gallery here with the classic Portuguese style balconies here ah, okay we've stumbled here across a little arcade a little shopping center let's go and check it out because I, well, I was going to say a lot of shops appear closed maybe it's just my imagination because of the lack of activity but maybe it's just a typical Thursday in Funchal so yeah I do recommend having some comfortable shoes when you visit Funchal oh, first time I've seen some of these they were of course very popular in the Caucasus but here in Funchal it seems to be the motorcycle but you do have a few of those as well yeah, some nice coffee shops places in here and over there as well a little shopping center this is very very cool actually very very tiny compact shopping center and this is just on the other side so yeah, it's a shame they play a lot of music obviously in shopping centers etc so I don't want to get a copyright strike so only showing you parts of it but yeah just give you a lot of shot here of some of the architecture a little bit of color here most of the buildings are white with the orange brownish roofs as I showed you earlier from the vantage points but here we are back I guess at the municipal gardens some sort of liberator João Fernandes Vieira I don't know who he is though I know about Prince Henry the Navigator and Captain Zarco and some of the other figures but if anyone knows who that is let us know in the comments more people hard at work with you guess what Christmas decorations and check out beautifully cut and maintained these plants are over here so it looks like they take a lot of pride in their gardens as well you can see one of the gardeners here hard at work and indeed that is the Ritz we saw earlier as well also part of the gardens here they got an auditorium an auditorium and a pretty impressive one mind you quite big and a refreshment station over there drinks and snacks maybe not a noise cancelling park this like you'll find in Tbilisi for example you know with the one just off Rustaveli Avenue which I showed you where you can absolutely get away from the traffic and the hustle and bustle here you are a little bit still in it but nonetheless still a wonderful spot to come and relax take a smoke break or play some candy crush on your phone I must say this cathedral in white or church in white looks pretty impressive some information about San Pedro church so there you can read the order for the construction of this church was given by Royal Charter in March 1590 so late 16th century and it's a mannerist church with a single nave with two collateral altars and three side chapels inside the church is decorated with ceramic tiles of the 17th century that cover practically all the walls of the nave the main chapel vestries and the back of the choir lot let's go in I'm not sure how much I'll be able to talk though, I'll probably have to be quiet, so I'll, uh, I'll let the magic of the church speak for itself.
do you think? Yeah, more restaurants and this is a very derelict looking building but still very beautiful with the balconies and the engravings or the inscriptions there and typical street scene here in Funchal lots of businesses restaurants and loads of trucks and they really drive quite viciously here in the streets but anyway Rua de Carreira looks like a pretty important street here in Funchal with loads of shops and restaurants beautiful architecture lots of balconies it looks your face looks so Christopher Columbus obviously Italian but married the daughter of the Tholomew Perestrello so I wonder if the Madeirans think he's one of their own I think that's the reddest cow I've seen today at least maybe ever and here we've got the Funchal Hopping Center La Vie oh hang on that's not right ah yes Funchal Shopping Center so I believe it's a pretty posh one they've even got a hotel here you can see there the vine a divine hotel so maybe a good chance to go and check out the shopping center here in Funchal so we're entering the center here now so this was the shopping center if you remember at the start of the vlog we passed and I said we'll come back later yeah it's a very very impressive shopping center this look at this beautiful lights lots of color lots of plants for sale and various shops you can see there a little coffee shop household stuff for sale here so fairly impressive don't you think and a lot of lardy da shops as well here prof where all the professors presumably come and shop zippy has a black friday special you even have a playground for kids and last but not least some beautiful views and wonderful escalators beautiful ceiling as well here this is where the Ladi Da Funchal buy their jewelry and their household stuff look at that Superman and Spider-Man I believe there's a supermarket here as well and obviously there are loads of cafes and small restaurant so let's see if we can grab a bite to eat at one of those and get an idea of how the locals eat and drink here in Funchal more sports shops and yeah here's the supermarket I've been told is in here I think even the supermarket has a a local restaurant so maybe that's something we can check out you can see there some of the food options they've got they've even got some economic options discount options I think yeah, some items for sale here I guess that's some fish yes yeah, so I just asked it is self-service so you take a plate take one of these trays so a plate and a tray and then it's self-service and you can pick and choose what you want yeah, so I went for a real mix of stuff some rice, meat, fish, vegetables and a mystery fish item here when you go traveling they say you should go where the locals go now that could either be in a local restaurant or in this case a restaurant in a supermarket or next to a supermarket because this is where the locals eat and I got all this food here so a mystery fish item got some rice, some salmon I've got some beef and vegetables all for 714 so 7 euro 14 and I bet you that in town I would have paid at least double for that I think we should try this mystery fish item first so there you go and that's what it looks like on the inside so Yeah. 
you know what it's a fish cake but it's not breaded so it's actually got a very nice flavor I don't know what it is quite yet what fish it is but it's certainly got a bit of a curry flavor it's like a fish cake without the crumbs if that makes sense so here you can see it breaks pretty easily it's actually quite nice and soft and you can see there the stew meat as well very very nice nice color inside so it's clearly not overcooked and very very tasty indeed often when you go traveling and you don't want to spend a fortune in restaurants it's often difficult to find affordable options to eat and I genuinely think I discovered a gem here in Funchal with this restaurant inside this shopping mall here right next to the supermarket in fact maybe even part of a supermarket so very very nice and lots of good healthy stuff going on on this plate maybe the best thing about the supermarket restaurant is the view you can have a front row seat here of a supermarket checkout which is quite unusual isn't it and a nice view of the rest of the luxury shopping center here living the dream eh? right i say thank you very much to the takeaway restaurant but now that we're in the supermarket we might as well pick up maybe a soft drink or two so let's see what we can find i'll come and do a price comparison of certain things in another vlog but for now let's just get something to drink ah yes this is what i was looking for the brisa which is a very Madeiran drink in fact it was created in 1970 and it is the first carbonated drink in the world made from pure passion fruit juice 149 so yeah, it looks like a pretty big bargain the brisa but let's go and find out what it tastes like Christmas spirit is very much alive here in Funchal and I'm excited because I got my brisa all right guys I'm outside the shopping area here and I've got the brisa which I'm gonna try now so I've given it a bit of a shake and you can see the cloudy texture has disappeared slightly and I've also been told it's a popular hangover cure here in Madeira so you can call it the Madeira cream soda or the passion fruit ambulance so here's to Madeira wow I like this a lot I really do let me just take another sip yes yeah, so the first sip I really enjoyed the second one I also enjoyed maybe not as much as the first because the element of surprise are gone but it's obviously a carbonated drink with a juice and it tastes like a real fizzy drink at first and then as you swallow it the smooth texture of a juice really comes through the passion fruit so it's a really kind of soothing feeling in your mouth i like this a lot let's just try one more sip just any excuse to have another one and here's a toast to madeira that madeira wine that thomas jefferson used to toast the declaration of independence i wonder if he had tasted brisa would he have still gone with a wine or would he have taken this drink here and as the sun is starting to set here in beautiful Madeira I think now is a good chance to end this vlog first impressions of Funchal this beautiful city here in Madeira and I know I still have a lot to see and explore but I'll bring you some more content of Funchal in due course and if you haven't done it yet please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for now I just want to say again thanks for watching my videos and I'll see you again soon. Cheers, take it easy.